Hey guys, this is Ryan with Mom on Mission, and today I'm starting a new little series um, called the How We Use series, and I'm going to go through our different um, parts of our curriculum and tell you how we use them. Um, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I was curriculum shopping anyway, I would look at a curriculum and just be like, that is way too much, or that's way too intense, or it's way too this, or way too that. Um, and then the more I got into homeschool, the more I realized like we can do things how we want. Um, you don't have to follow the curriculum verbatim, and um, there's lots of different ways to use a certain curriculum. And so I just thought um, I would show you guys how we use ours and maybe just give you some ideas if you currently have this curriculum and you just are feeling stuck, um, or maybe if you're considering this curriculum but think it's to this or to that or whatever. Um, just to give you an idea of maybe a different way you could try it. Um, or then you can come up with your own way. Um, so today I'm going to start us off with Saxon math and I'm only going to show you my um, third graders because we kind of use the same approach for kindergarten, first, second, and third. Um, we have not moved beyond third so I'm only going to speak for the elementary levels, early elementary levels, because I know after this third grade level then we get into um, math 5-4 and math 6-5 and it's like a totally different ball game. So I'm only going to show you how we use these younger levels because they're all set up pretty similarly. So it has taken us a few years to get um, to this routine. I used to try to do things um, through Saxon very verbatim and um, that didn't always work out for me. It was great when I just had one child and so it was just kindergarten and no one else was school age yet so it was easy but I realized very quickly that Saxon can be very time consuming if you don't alter it a little bit. So we have done that. First things is we do our worksheets first. I don't have a worksheet here to show you. Um, but what I do is I stick their worksheets in with their independent work. So when they're working independently, they go ahead and give that worksheet a go. Now Saxon is a spiral approach. So only like one or two questions on the whole worksheet actually pertain to the thing we're learning that very day. So the rest of the worksheet should be just review. So they should know how to do that already. Now, those one or two questions are over things that we will be learning that day. So of course they haven't learned them yet, but this gives me a really good idea on if they already know them or if they at least have a little bit of a grasp on what it's going to be about. Um, and that helps me know how in depth I need to go on teaching that specific thing because there's a lot of times we'll get to something and they already know it or I just show them and they're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And they got it. Um, so I make them do side A. There's always a side A and a side B on their worksheets. I make them do side A. If there's one that they absolutely do not know, like the thing that's going to be taught that very day, I just have them circle the number and skip it and move on and finish the rest of the worksheet. So then after that, in the very beginning of each lesson, you'll see this shaded area and that has lesson preparation, so that has what supplies you will need, what you might need to do the night before, um, and then it has things down here that will be in the meeting, and that includes things like the thermometer, um, patterns, problem of the day, money, things like that. So what I do is I simply look here at what the um, pattern is going to be, so this one, blank, 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 48, 58, 68, blank, 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 blank. And then at the end it says rule over there. So I write that out on a uh, piece of paper for him, usually the back of his um, time test because those are always blank. And have him fill in the blanks, have him tell me the rule that he used to get that pattern. So that one would be plus two or whatever. And then I also write out or verbally tell him, depending on the problem, the little word problem down here. And he has to answer that. So that's kind of how we start off our actual math lesson. And then in the book, you will see what is called the meeting down here. We basically don't use this. We did in kindergarten, did a little bit in first grade, but it got really redundant, really repetitive, and it just wasn't helpful. It took up a lot of time for no reason. Um, so this goes over calendar number of the day, temperature, counting, so counting by twos, counting by tens, counting by fives, counting backwards by twos, all these different things. Um, and then it goes over 
the pattern, which we um, have already done at this point, clock, problem of the day, which we've already done, and then the coin cup, where you put X amount of coins in a cup and have them count it back and identify the different coins and whatever. So we do the problem, we do the pattern. The rest of it, we really don't do. I will skim over it and see if there's a concept um, each day that maybe he isn't familiar with, but typically there's not. Um, and early in our day, when we first start our school day, we do a little bit of this type of stuff, the date and the calendar and all this. Um, so I just find it's kind of a waste of time. So we typically just skip most of the meeting, which takes us down to the lesson. Starts down here. This one, counting dimes, nickels, and pennies. So what we do here um, is I look at his worksheet that he's already done and I see how he did on those new concepts. If I see that he's done really well, then typically what I will do is go to the examples. So typically, the, um, this is all scripted. So all of the bold print, you say, and then the rest um, is either what they should have answered or um, telling you what to do, what to write on the board and everything. Um, and after the scripted teaching, then it goes on to um, like giving them examples. So if I see that he has done well on the worksheet on this specific um, topic, then I will just go straight to the examples and I'll give him an example and see if he um, can work it out himself. And if he can, I might do one more. And if he still seems like he has it, then we'll just skip that. I'm not going to teach something that he already knows. Um, if I look on his worksheet and he has missed that or left it blank because he didn't understand it, then we will go and do the whole teaching. And then I will start in on the examples. And I will just do as many examples as it takes until he gets it. So the only difference between those two, between if he knew it or not, was... If I felt like he didn't know it at first, I read the teaching section and then we go, move on to the examples and do as many as I feel like he needs. If he seems to have gotten it on the first example, we don't do any more. Um, and then like there will be another section sometimes of teaching. And so then I go through that whole thing again. Like I look on the worksheet, if he's done well on that, I only use the examples. If he's not done well on that, we'll teach it. And then at the end of the lesson, there is what is called class practice, and this is typically where we are working on our mental math. Um, so it usually has you um, do the flashcards with them over their different facts, and I usually give him the option. If he feels like he needs the extra practice, then he usually chooses to do the flashcards. If it's ones that we've been over several times and he doesn't feel like doing the flashcards, I don't make him do the flashcards. Um, if it is a new set of facts, I definitely make him do the flashcards. And then after they've done the flashcards, it usually gives you a time test to do. This year he only has 45 seconds for this test of 25 problems. And neither of my kids are excellent at time tests. Um, and I never was either. I was pretty decent at math. Um, I did well in math. I hated anything timed because it just stressed me out and then I couldn't think right. So. I don't put too much into these. I still make them do them um, just because I do believe it is good practice to have to um, bring those facts to mind quickly. Um, but what I do is I go ahead and time them for that. When the timer has gone off, we grade it. And then Saxon has, and then Saxon has these little charts. I'm trying not to show my son's full name. Um, but down here, this is where you, whoop, there's where you log. Um, all of their um, time test results and then down here at the bottom you have like a target number of facts that they're supposed to learn um, in 45 seconds if they do 20 to 25 that's excellent if they do 15 to 19 that's good if they do 10 to 14 that's acceptable so kind of how we've tweaked that because they expect you to do all that and then just whatever ones you didn't finish didn't get to um, to just do those after the timer goes off and you've graded then just finish the worksheet out that was taking a long time. So um, instead what we do is if they have gotten excellent or good um, for their target, then we just call it good and they're done with math. Um, if they have not done, if they got in the acceptable category, I make them do one more row of problems. That's typically five more problems. Um, and if they've gotten below acceptable, then I make them do 
at least two more rows um, of the problems. And if they're still not getting it, then I'll have them finish off the page. But typically, if they've gotten um, less than acceptable, it's not a not knowing it thing. It's simply they were flustered and they were kind of newer facts, so it just took them longer. Um, so usually when they um, get below acceptable and they've done those two extra lines, so those 10 extra problems, they do them really fast and they're not timed. So I don't worry about that too much. And then the very end, we go back to the worksheet. Anything that they got wrong, I make them correct it. And if it's more than just like a, oh, they forgot to put the dollar sign or they forgot to put AM or PM or whatever it is, then we'll just say fix that and then call it good. If they actually miscalculated or didn't do the problem correctly, um, I mentioned there are two sides to that worksheet and they only had to do the front. Well then on the back, it's not the same problems, but it is the same type of problems. So if number one was an addition problem, an addition word problem, then number one on the back will be an addition word problem, just a different one. Um, if there was a clock time problem on number three, then number three on the back will have a different clock or time problem. So anything they get wrong on the front, they have to do the corresponding one on the back. Like I said, as long as it wasn't like a just a missed symbol or something. Um, and so that shows me that they've understood why they got it wrong and can go back and fix it and do it right. So, and then we just call it a day as far as math goes. Now every five lessons, I believe, is a written assessment. And every 10 lessons is both a written and an oral assessment. So on those days, um, we just use the written and oral assessments exactly how they are. Um, the oral assessments are really easy. It's usually just a um, maybe two to five questions that I just ask them out loud and they um, either tell me what they need to tell me or sometimes they have to use linking cubes or something to act it out. Um, and then the written test is just, at third grade it's a front and back test. For first and second I believe it's just a front um, one-sided worksheet um, and I just can't help them on anything other than um, maybe if they have trouble reading something. And then I um, grade those and keep those um, uh, on this side and then I make a note on um, if they missed anything what they missed and so I can kind of just keep track of what it is they're having problems on and typically with my kids especially my older one it's just rushing trying to get things done quickly and so he misreads or miscalculates when really he knows the right answer so that is how we keep Saxon more simple and um, don't let it take half a day and it's really working for us so if you use Saxon I would love to know down below how you use it and if you um, are having success with it and if not what kind of math do you use and how are you liking it so I thank you so much for watching if you have not subscribed please do so I would love to um, just chat with you more and um, get to know you guys better so thanks for watching I'll see you next time bye